Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there, together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Well, let's begin with prayer, eh? Oh, gracious Father, by this Easter mystery, you touch our lives with the power of your love. May we who celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior find joy in the gift of everlasting life forever and ever. It is in the name of thy son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. You know, I suspect that you might not be shocked or you might expect for pastor to say what I'm going to say next, but nonetheless, here it is. <laughs> I get a kick out of some of the things that I come across when I read our sacred scriptures. I was reading from St. Paul this week, and there was an interesting piece that appears in his first letter to the Corinthians in the opening chapter. It's where Paul says this. He says, I am thankful that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone say you were baptized in my name. And then there follows these words that are in parenthesis in our Bible. And that parenthetical expression says, I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know if I baptized anyone else. End of parentheses. And can you just hear the apostle now saying, Crispus and Gaius I baptized, but I'm thankful that no one else was baptized by me. Well, except for Stephanus. Yeah, I baptized Stephanus as well. Oh, and, and I did baptize his whole entire household, but there wasn't anybody. Well, maybe there were others, but I just don't remember. I think that's a hoot. I think that's a hoot. And it makes this old pastor with failing memory feel not quite so bad. And there's some of that, you know, going on in today's scripture reading or gospel lesson, too. It has some some frivolity to it, I think, some funny overtones to it. I don't know about, if you're my age, you'll, you'll probably recollect that in my younger days, streaking was one of the end things. Huh? And now it seems that playing sports sans clothing is uh, one of those end things. Naked volleyball, I understand is going strong these days and uh, you know I followed uh, one of those internet rabbit holes you know clicking here and then clicking there and clicking there and so forth and I saw not so very long ago that topless tobogganing was really big in Germany but if you follow today's gospel closely you'll have to admit that uh, all that stuff is really pretty old hat I mean, look at what it tells us about St. Peter, right? St. Peter was evidently really into naked fishing. <laughs> but then it gets even weirder. Not only is Peter fishing nude, when he decides to dive into the water to swim to shore, he doesn't just take the plunge. Oh, no, before he does that, well, did you see what? Did you catch what Peter does? <laughs> yeah. He puts on his clothes so he can spring into the water, dressed. <laughs> he doesn't have any clothes on, but let's put some clothes on so we can go swimming. No, I think that's a hoot, right? It's just a hoot. <laughs> And you can also read uh, what comes just before that as comical as well if you choose. When Jesus says, children, have you any fish? And no comes the reply that Jesus says, well, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And it's kind of, it reminds me of certain cities, you know, where you park your car on this side of the street on odd days and this side of the street on even days. And here it is, well, you can just hear Peter saying, the right side of the boat, you say. Gee, we've been fishing on the left side all night long, but today is the right side of the boat day. Okay, got it. 
There's a whole lot of fun in the Bible if you're willing to let it feed you in that fashion. But of course, it's not all just fun and games. It's very serious stuff as well. And there's plenty of that going on in our episode two. Two significant pieces of serious stuff show up here, which I want to touch on, along with the fun stuff I've already cited. You remember that in the lesson, there's this charcoal fire going on the lake shore. Jesus says to his disciples, come and have breakfast. And the passage says they did not ask him who he was, for they knew it was the Lord. And yet the question pops up, doesn't it? Even though it doesn't get asked, it pops up. And I suspect that part of what the, the passage, part of what the text is seeking to say is sort of something like Ebenezer Scrooge says when the spirit of Jacob Marley invades his living quarters. Scrooge says to the specter, who are you? And Marley tells him to ask who he was. And so Scrooge obliges and he hears the response, in life I was your partner, Jacob Marley. And in A Christmas Carol, Marley is a ghost, isn't he? And he tells Scrooge he's going to be haunted by three more ghosts. And I believe it is precisely at this point that the gospel lesson wants to intercede and speak to us about Jesus and say that the Lord Jesus is emphatically not a ghost. He's not a specter. He's not a shade which who has come to be with his disciples in that form and fashion. But it is the very same Jesus that they knew before he was crucified, died, and was buried. The Lord here is the same Lord, though now risen and resurrected from the dead. And so our reading is, is very much at pains to ensure that we do not see present Ghosts for our reading pleasure here. Jesus is not that. Jesus is not a poltergeist. Jesus is not a ghost. But what he is, is that he is still very much the human Jesus, which his disciples have always known heretofore. And so there's breakfast, you see, to be eaten to be consumed. A ghost doesn't have any interest in such things. A ghost has no interest in matters of fish and bread. But Jesus takes fish and bread. You see, it's vital to see that Jesus is, even on the other side of the grave, very much a man, a human being just as much as he is the word that was with God and was God from the get-go. Still a human being. And that's serious stuff, of course. And then there is that additional matter that transpires with St. Peter. Again, I point to the charcoal fire. It might seem like an insignificant detail until you're reminded, of course, of where Peter was following the episode in the Garden of Gethsemane. He follows the Savior, right? He follows Jesus after the Lord is arrested. 
And he finds himself in the courtyard of the high priest as Jesus is being interrogated by the Jewish authorities. And John chapter 18, verse 18 says, Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them standing and warming himself. And then a few verses later, the gospel writer says, Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Peter again denied it three times. Three times there alongside that burning charcoal fire, Peter had been questioned about his relationship to the Jesus who was being interrogated. And all three times, he denied being a follower of Jesus. Now here, alongside a charcoal fire, it's Jesus who three times questions Peter about his relationship to the resurrected one. And this searching threefold questioning is a scene, I believe, that packs quite a wallop and leaves an impression on every single disciple. And rightly so, for after fashion, of course, Peter is the stand-in here for every disciple. Just as he was the stand-in for every disciple who has ever failed to acknowledge his master and Lord. Peter, do you love me? Asked Jesus. And it hurt Peter. When that question was put to him in that same threefold pattern, just like his denial. But he answered, not brashfully or boastfully, perhaps, as he had when he had said that he would never abandon the Lord, willingly die for him. But here, humbly and with all humility, as well as with profound reverence, I believe, he says, Lord, you know everything. And you know that I love you. And when all is said and done, what other response and plea does any of us have as disciples for that penetrating question? of the Lord's. I mean, we too have failed, right? We faltered, we've denied. Surely more than we care to admit or own up to, and yet we do love Jesus. And he knows it. It is as our loved brother Martin Luther phrased it. Simul justus a peccator, simultaneously saint and sinner. And what Peter has done, you see, is not ignored, but it is dealt with through the forgiving love of the one who came to be the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. And the resurrected Lord unfolds this perfectly for every disciple to see here in this passage. God so loved the world, right, that he sent his only begotten son that uh, whoever loves and gets loved by him is loved by the love of the Father, the love of God. Peter's shame meets Jesus' grace. And God's grace triumphs. Christ poses that momentous question to Peter, do you love me? And it really is. It really is a momentous question. 
Because not to love him is to not love goodness. Not to love him is not to love God. Not to love him is to not love mercy and grace. Not to love him is not to love love itself, for God is love. And yet, for the disciple who loves, who fails, yes, but who nonetheless loves, there is this unbreakable connection to the Lord of life who bids us, as he does Peter, follow me and feed and tend my flock. That is his holy church. You know, it's a very full gospel reading that we have for this third Sunday of Easter. And if you wish to do so, you can observe, I believe, some very humorous goings on with this scripture. And there's also plenty of intense serious and weighty matters to be seen and considered. Fishing, feeding, forgiving, and fun are all here for us to take in. Bottom line, of course, is that we follow. Follow the one who loves us, who loves us to the cross and beyond. Follow him in love and in service. Amen. Christ is risen.